in our never-ending quest to find cooperation wherever we go, the two of us are always on the hunt for games that encourage co-op. But what about the games where single player is all you've got and you can't benefit from bringing a friend? Well, he's a little more than a friend, and we'll find a way to cooperate whether it makes or breaks the game. Benefits with Friends this series where we explore how multiplayer mods affect single player games. The Subnautica Nitrox mod is perfect for the person who wants to share their adventure with someone other than the sarcastic AI helper. And at the very least, it gives you the opportunity to get over your thoughtsophobia with a friend or loved one. Whichever it is, we're here to find out if Subnautica with Friends has its benefits. Well, first and foremost, let me get... You just jump scared me so hard. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> In this series, we try to keep everything vanilla, aside from the multiplayer, so we can't speak to how it interacts with other mods. But something to keep in mind is that if you do choose to try out this multiplayer mod, you'll need to revert to the legacy build of Subnautica. From what I understand, at the moment, this is only possible with the Steam version. Anyways, as our resident computer genius, I let him worry about setting things up, but it's mostly just a lot of clicking menus and waiting for things to load. That's easy. And that's just quartz, right? Two quartz. Jack, stop pushing buttons. He's what have our I buttons. done? What, what did you push, Jack? Holy. Okay. Did he just like glitch it out? He's just being a cat. I don't know if we were more horrified or excited by the game breaking bug warning as we loaded into the server for the first time. It seems like such a power move that before we've even loaded into the game properly, Subnautica Nitrox makes it clear that you should expect the unexpected. This is basically the video game equivalent of one of those waivers you have to sign before jumping at a trampoline park, saying you won't get upset with someone if you break your neck having fun. God, I just drank water. Did you just crash through a thing or no? No, I didn't. Oh my god. <laughs> you look like you're like bouncing off the walls. Game breaking bugs may occur. A bold statement to be sure. But thankfully for us, that's just part of the fun. I need to like eat as soon as I get in, I think. No. Ugh. The second I log in. I lost everything because of a bug, but I guess that's what we uh, signed up for. We encountered our fair share of issues during our co-op session. Aside from things not loading in for one player without the other, the two of us also noticed that our day-night cycles got desynced at some point. Fortunately, most of your time in Subnautica is spent beneath the waves, so chances are, like us, you and your friend may not even notice the discrepancy until you come back up for air at the same time. After weeks without human contact, it is normal to experience psychological discomfort. Research indicates symptoms may be partly alleviated by adopting a pet or anthropomorphizing an inanimate object. Or bringing your girlfriend. That helps too. Subnautica is an interesting game to add multiplayer to because depending on the type of player you are, your goals and priorities may be very different from your partners. We try to do things together, but it's surprisingly easy to get separated. If we were stranded in real life, I have no doubt that we'd stick together. But in Subnautica, as soon as one of us sees a cool looking fish, we take off swimming in the other direction. I guess the buddy system only applies if there isn't something shiny to chase after. Like, what is this? Oh. <laughs> Wonderful. Either way, we covered more ground, so it ended up working out in our favor. With two people going out to scan things, you end up blueprinting twice as fast. We cleared a larger area than one normally would in a single player game and ended up unlocking things way faster than usual. It's fortunate that the blueprints are shared globally, because otherwise we'd need to find everything twice. This is especially nice if you're a returning player and just want to blast through the early stages of the game in order to get some of the more advanced blueprints for building. Oh my goodness, that looked hilarious. Regardless of our style of play, the two of us always shared one common enemy, oxygen. There's nothing more frustrating than going out to explore and constantly getting caught on that pesky leash attached to our lungs. Our early game was spent wrestling with the oxygen tank upgrades and constantly overestimating how much air we had left in them. For the two of us, it helped push us towards the common goal of getting the sea moths built. Their use as portable air was one thing, but using them as beacons is where they really come in handy, if you know what I mean. I see your sea moth. You're not in it, though. You don't see me? Oh, you're like way over here. Wait, my sea moth is next to me. If I get into it, it's gonna move to me, watch. Okay. Yours did this earlier. Whoa! <laughs> Doesn't that look funny? It's That's gonna go through there. so funny. It's like Thor's hammer. It just disappeared! 
mean? <laughs> I always enjoyed resource collection in Subnautica because I like to build. The thing that gave me the biggest headache was inventory management, and this mostly came from the way the inventory works. I just wish things could stack because all my tools in the sea glide take up so much space. But I'll admit being afraid of leviathans doesn't help matters either. Luckily, having a second player effectively doubles how much you can carry when you're out on an excursion, assuming you like exploring together. I am like a dolphin trainer at this point. <laughs> Come on, come on, you can do it. I got another tooth, Taryn. I am so good. I'm like the stalker whisperer or something. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have a show at the Mirage. This is great. Usually there's a long list of chores to do in between big projects. And with both of us, that gets simplified. It's also much easier to divide and conquer, especially if you've played before and you know where to find certain things. Oh, we already have that shit. I should probably come back to base. Oh, but I want to explore more. Just go explore more. It's I'm fine. just full, so I can't pick up any of this titanium from scanning things. Uh... There are two mouths to feed, but thankfully he's got a girlfriend who always remembers to pack snacks. With me on food and water duty, there's always a locker filled to the brim. The real trick is figuring out which one it is. I also need to really drink some water real quick, so let me do that. Okay, I have a water chest in my moon pool room. Yeah, it's right there. Damn. It didn't used to just be coral. I don't know what happened. Did you by any chance replace the coral? Or... Nope. I didn't even know that I was there. Okay, mine. I just want I just want proof. Mine. I just opened. Holy shit! So it has water bottles. We're like playing two different games in the same game. Anyways. Turn don't drink the bleach. Turn that into water. Hello there. Hey. You look nice. Thank you, say you. Unfortunately, it doesn't do him any good if he leaves on an adventure across the map without bringing anything with him. I'm gonna run out of food and shit, man. I'm just, I am just beyond myself. I've really outdone myself this time. Being the generous girlfriend that I am, I swam an emergency packed lunch out to him, but when he needed it the most, he couldn't even see it for some reason. Also, according to him, it looked like I was swimming in midair, but that might have just been the dehydration talking. I see trees. Oh, you do? Yeah. Whoa. You just like flew over my head. Hi. Hey. Okay. You're just like swimming in midair. Oh my goodness. Do you see this water I'm dropping? No. Really? Shit, okay. Base building has always been the main allure for me in Sonatica, and the seemingly limitless amount of titanium he brings home to the base changes it from a chore to a dream. Usually the one thing holding me back from building underwater cities is running out of titanium. For the most part, he's happy to let me design the habitat because he prefers going out to hunt for new blueprints anyways, but it's easy to forget that the basic resources still serve a purpose in the early game. Just because he's the one supplying all these resources doesn't mean I can spend them on whatever I want. I may have accidentally crossed the line and slipped into endgame mindset where the only thing to build is furniture and potted plants. What are you doing? You made an aquarium. Taryn, this whole place is an aquarium. Why do you need an aquarium? <laughs> Designing a base for two people turned out to be just as difficult as it is in real life. We disagree on things just about as much as we would on our own home. I guess if we do though, I could always remove this L piece here and have it go like out more. Or I could come out like something like this. I don't know if you can see this, but something like that. So if that's the case, then I'll get rid of the foundation. It's all about finding stuff that suits his needs without compromising my own. Obviously, what I care about the most is a nice view. Oh, look at the view over here. That's so that's cool. That's so cool. We were on the market for something with a two-car garage and room to grow. Parking both vehicles inside ended up being a necessity for charging and upgrades, not to mention we both wanted recolors. So we looked at our moon pool and decided it would look much nicer with another one slapped up next to it. His and hers moon pool. His and hers. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. He also wanted a place with a long driveway so that we could park a cyclops out front and use it to go camping on the weekends. I agreed, but I doubt we'll ever get one because the insurance is through the roof. And okay. I don't think I lost anything. I'm in the sub -tarny. Look parking. at this beautiful parallel parking, Taryn. Like, you did amazing. This is so nice. I think that this is going to be great. 
I, we're gonna take that thing out on so many adventures. On the topic of vehicles, it's important to take good care of them. Staying on top of repairs is worth it to not have to waste resources crafting another, and it's not even crafting the vessel that's expensive, but all the depth modules that go with it. It can get annoying how often you have to repair them, because there's so many angry things in the ocean trying to chew our rides to pieces. Although, nothing is as dangerous as we are. Jesus Christ. He's the absolute king of crashing into stuff that hasn't loaded in yet, while I'm the queen of crashing into him. Oh shit. You just blew up my sea moth. Oh my god. What the f- Taryn, I lost all my modules. No! In case you didn't notice, things literally went from 0 to 100 and back down again. Ironically, defensive driving is more applicable here than it is in real life. You are a threat to yourself and those and around you. <laughs> also, our base no longer has legs. Especially if you're driving next to a girlfriend. No fish in the sea is capable of dishing out as much damage as me behind the wheel of the subtarney. He's looked the leviathan straight in the mouth and laughed. Hi there! <laughs> <laughs> I want to scan you, sir. You are crazy! I can't even believe you. <laughs> it's funny. But enters a mad panic if he sees me hurtling towards him. If you aren't careful where you park these things, then one of you may end up having to swim home. And I can already tell you it's not gonna be me. That's the decoy. Okay, so the c alien containment unit should be in one of the- Did I just kill you? Yes. Oh my god. According to the game's lore, the Cyclops is meant to be piloted by three people, so technically this is where the multiplayer mod was meant to shine. Based on my performance in the Seamoth, it was a no-brainer to let him steer and keep me on maintenance duty. Things went much smoother than when I was piloting things by myself, that's for sure. We ran a tight ship where he would pilot the bigger sub and intermittently deploy me in the Exotarney to mine ore nodes. We stacked up resources really quick with a strat, but not without some slight hiccups. <laughs> Our poster is moving along the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh! not oh. the biggest fan. Oh. So long, poster. <laughs> the main reason you may want a buddy Subnautica is so that someone else can go out and risk their lives with the Leviathans to get the rare crafting materials. I don't understand how he can swim into deep, dangerous areas so casually, but I'm glad he's willing to do it for the both of us. Oh. <gasps> is that where you are? Are you certain? Whatever you're doing is worth it. Is um, it worth it? Whoops. <laughs> It, it is, but I, I, like I said, I don't really have a way to deal with them yet. I won't set foot in the water if I know Leviathans are nearby, but he'll have one practically roaring in his ear and still won't turn around. Duck out of the way. You have no power here, Leviathan. <laughs> He's like, all right, fine, you win. <laughs> I'm gonna go after your girlfriend instead. Ah! I guess it's a good thing one of us is going to be brave, because coincidentally, all the cool stuff is hiding in dangerous locations. Oh my god, this thing is like right here. Oh, I can't even see him. Let me try to hit him. <laughs> it's like a horror game. Okay, I'm in my sea moth. Alright, why don't we bail that? We got what we came for. What is going on? Oh my god. What just happened? I just did a thing. I will say, I felt a lot more confident this go around, and it might have something to do with having partner in crime. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go. You look park. awesome. There Thank she goes. You. When there's a shoulder to cry on or a boyfriend to look tough in front of, it's a lot easier to act brave. There's no way I'm gonna let him go alone and act all cool, and I think he knows it. Somehow it switches from an excursion to collect materials into a contest to see who will go home first. I don't know what it is about being in open water, but for some reason, it always turns into a competition to see who's willing to swim out further. I guess that's why they call it liquid courage. I'd like to see it if possible. <laughs> this is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. We're we're engaging in a bizarre mating ritual, Taryn. You should be able to see it now. There oh, he there goes. he is. Oh, he's pissed. Overall, my opinion on the Subnautica Nitrox mod is that it's perfect if what you're looking for is derping around in a game together with a friend. If you played the base game and ever wished you had a fellow diver crashing into you in your Seamoth, then this will be a lot of fun. If you ask my boyfriend, you'll get a more strict review. The type of player that likes to be efficient and really go hard may find themselves getting a headache from the lack of polish. I'm gonna 
put my plasteel ingots and stuff into this bag for safekeeping. Like we were, we didn't know what to do with it. We had so much of it at some point. Right. What happened to my bag? Your bag. I had a bag here with enameled glass in it. What? Can you see it? Is it invisible for me? I can't see it. Oh shit. Expect to lose materials in unfair ways and try not to get too attached to your vehicles. He needed several reminders throughout the evening that we weren't there to speed run the game or play things perfectly. We're here to enjoy an evening of underwater bumper cars and teasing fish. Oh, here he comes. <gasps> Creature attack. <laughs> Hog the horn at him. So does Subnautica with friends have benefits? Let's just say it won't be a playthrough you forget anytime soon. <laughs> Where did you just shoot him? They just shot him off into the distance. There he is! Oh, there's two! There's two? He brought a friend! <laughs> 